Hello everybody, Brother Barnabas here. Thanks for joining me for another Devo today. If it's a blessing to you, then be sure to uh, like it or share it uh, so others can find it and be blessed by it as well. And today we're in John chapter 2, uh, verse 18. And we're kind of picking up the second part of the account of how Jesus um, cleared the temple. Uh, last time we talked about how um, zeal for the house of God consumed Jesus, how the house of God, the temple, was supposed to be a house of prayer. And the Gentile people, um, the Gentiles would come to the outer courts to pray. And, of course, there was the inner courts for the Israelite people, the Holy of Holies and the place where the priests would be, and then uh, the the courts for the Israelite men, and then the court of women, and then um, the Gentiles, the court of the Gentiles in the outermost part. And um, and in the outermost part, it became become a marketplace filled with... Um, people selling uh, sacrificial animals and changing money and, and all sorts of things. And Jesus came and, and made a whip and drove all the people out of there. And we talked about that last time. And um, this time uh, we're going to study how the Jews responded to that then. And um, we pick it up then with uh, verse 18. It says, The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, It has taken 40, 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Now while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, Many people saw the signs he was performing and believed in his name. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. He did not need any testimony about mankind, for he knew what was in each person. And um, so uh, once again, we find that um, that Jesus is um, you know, light years ahead of everybody else. He's on a, thinking on a whole different level, a whole different... Uh, playing field, a whole different plane, so to speak. You know, he's, um, his ways are so much higher than our ways. His thoughts so much greater than our thoughts. And we really see this in this passage here because um, the Jews are saying, well, well, who are you? By what authority do you drive out all the buyers and the sellers and the money changers? You know, who are you to do this? You know, and, um, and they even ask him, you know, prove your authority to us. And then Jesus answered saying, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. And, um, and you know, and, and the Pharisees and the Jewish leaders, they're just like kind of befuddled uh, by that. You know, it's like, again, uh, Jesus, the things that he's saying are on a whole different level uh, than the religious leaders, you know. And, um, and they say, you know, it took 46 years to build this the first time. How are you going to raise it back up in three days? And um, they did not, they didn't have a clue that he was talking about his body being the temple. And um, later on, I mean, the, the disciples didn't get it either. You know, it was only later on that the disciples recalled what he had said. And then they believed the scriptures and believed that Jesus was who he said he was, the Son of God, God in the flesh. And, um, and we know that the, the, the body of Jesus was raised after three days. Jesus was crucified and buried and um, and dead in, in the ground for three days. And then he was resurrected from the dead. And he has a, res he had a, res has a resurrection body uh, that is a prototype, the first fruits uh, for all of us who believe. Um, so there's a few things that we just need to, to dwell on this morning and be encouraged by. You know, first of all, pow Jesus has... Uh, the power to raise the dead. Um, he himself is the resurrection and the life, as he states clearly uh, later on. You know, but here, as he's talking to the Jewish leaders, you know, he's saying, uh, destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. He's just kind of giving a hint. Uh, but for us who believe, for us, us that know the rest of the New Testament, uh, we rejoice. We rejoice because Jesus... Um, in whom the, the fullness of the deity dwelt bodily. You know, in Jesus, the fullness of the Godhead was there in him. Like I was saying, his, his thoughts are way above our thoughts, and, and his ways are way above our ways. 
you know, and and his conversation with the Pharisees, with the Jewish leaders just shows this. But those of us that know Jesus um, and know that he died on the cross for our sins, and we know that he raised, he was raised from the dead on the third day, and we know that he ever lives to intercede for us at the right hand of the Father, and we know that he has gone to prepare a place for us. You know, this is all... Um, really good news you know to the the jewish leaders they just didn't get it at all even the disciples didn't get it but those of us now looking back and say oh jesus he was the temple it wasn't that that people came to the temple to the brick and mortar temple to meet with god but jesus was the real temple he was right there in their midst and they didn't recognize that he was the true temple of the living God, that the bricks and mortar and the inner court and the outer courts and all that, that was past. That's old way of doing things. That's Old Testament, Old Covenant in Jesus Christ and New Covenant in New Testament times. Jesus is the temple of the living God. The fullness of God dwelt in him bodily. And um, and now as we look back um, to continue that thought a little bit more, um, we know from an Apostle Paul and his um, theology and teachings that now all of us become a body of Christ. Each and every one of us who put our faith in Christ, we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. God comes and lives inside of us by his Holy Spirit. And we together make up the temple of the living God. So God doesn't live in a temple of brick and mortar any longer. Um, he lives. He lived first and foremost in the one and only Son of God, Jesus Christ. The fullness of the God had dwelt in him bodily. But also, God dwells in each one of us um, individually by his Holy Spirit and, um, and corporately by all of us together. It takes all of us uh, to make up the temple of God um, on this earth. And... Um, and that's a lot to get a, your, your mind around, you know, that both God lives inside us individually, but then even more powerfully and maybe more importantly in all of us together as uh, brothers and sisters in the family of God and as individual members of the body of Christ. Just think about it, that, you know, each one of us has has a role to play. Each one of us is a member of the of the body. Each one of us are living stones that make up the temple of God, the spiritual temple on this earth. So just as in the Old Testament, when people would come to the temple uh, to worship God and to pray to God and to hear from God, to sacrifice to him, you know, now, now people come to us to hear from God because we are God's ambassadors. We are God's family. We are his sons and daughters. We are uh, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. We are set apart uh, to represent God to people and to intercede for God, for people before God and uh, and to represent God to them. So it's awesome if you think about this whole issue, this whole um, idea of uh, the temple. But anyway, getting back to our text here, you know, the, the, the Jewish leader says it took 46 years. You're going to raise it in three days. And, um, you know, they didn't get it. Disciples didn't get it. Um, but Jesus, uh, Jesus was in a whole different plane, and that's what he go. What the scriptures go on to say, it said um, uh, he went on. He did many signs, and um, he, Jesus went around signing, doing many signs and miracles, and many people uh, believed, but Jesus did not entrust them himself to them. In other words, Jesus did not reveal himself. He did not reveal all of his plans. Um, he didn't tell about everything that was going to happen or everything he was going to do um, because he didn't trust them. He didn't entrust himself to them because he knows all people. And again, uh, Jesus and his thinking and his ways are on a whole different plane uh, than ours because it says he didn't need any testimony about mankind for he knew what was in each person. So he didn't need somebody to tell him what people are like because not only did he know what people are like, he knew each and every person and what was in them. And, um, and being the Son of God, um, being, being God in the flesh, he knew each and every person. And he knows you, my friend. He knows me. He knows our shortcomings. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. He knows what we're good at. He knows what we're bad at. 
He knows where we fail. He knows where we succeed. He knows not only the things we say, he knows the things we think. He knows what's in us better than we do. But we call upon a merciful God, a faithful God, a God of grace and mercy. So let's call on him this morning. What a privilege it is uh, to approach the living God, knowing that he loves us and has grace and mercy for us. Let's pray, my friends. Lord, thank you that thank you that you are a God of grace and mercy. And even though you know us, Lord, better than you know ourselves, Lord, you know us better than um, than our wives or our friends or anyone else, Lord. You know everything. But yet, Lord, still you choose to love us. Still you choose to be with us. Still you long for us to spend time with you and call upon your name. We thank you for your grace and mercy that covers every sin, Lord. We thank you that, um, that we receive your grace and forgiveness and that we can extend it to others, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, to be a temple for you, Lord. Lord, search our hearts. See if there be any wicked way in us and take it out, Lord. Lord, and then let us be holy and pure and set apart to be a residence for you, Lord, to be a vessel for you, Lord, that we could carry you into every situation each and every day, Lord. Lord, that we could bring your presence to the people around us, Lord, to our love. We pray now, Lord, for those people that you've put into our lives, Lord, people that we can uh, be a blessing to, that we can represent you to, that we can pray for and bring the presence of God into their lives. Lord, I pray for my family, my friends, and uh, friends, just continue praying until next time. God bless.